Welcome back to Unsettling Tales of True Horror. I'm Celeste. And I'm Mason. Welcome back. For this week's episode, it is known as The Phone Stalker. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. Oh, wait. I forgot. How was your week? Um, Good. So, Easter Sunday. We have block schedule now for this week. Basically, we have three classes every day. Only three. And it's either even and odd, but we get out in normal time. So every class is almost two hours long. That sounds terrible. How about you? What did I do this last week? I don't even know. <laughs> then how was your Easter? Um, Sunday was good. We had good food. Oakley wore two different Easter outfits because she <laughs> just looked cute in both of them. Okay, we're going to jump right into this episode. So my sources are medium.com and reddit.com. Okay. This tale of horrifying harassment for three Washington families will make sure you never take your privacy for granted again. In Washington in 2007, a 16-year-old girl named Courtney Coy Kendall began receiving text messages from her friends asking her why she was sending them really weird random messages. So she ended up responding to them saying that it wasn't her like like texting them like that's got to be weird like your friends like you get a message from your friend randomly saying why are you texting me that and you're like like what are you talking about and you go and look and it's like some weird random like things like i didn't text text you any of that (laughs) yeah like maybe like it couldn't have been a butt dial either because that's like i don't know that no that's weird harder than calling because it was multiple people i don't know weird okay so then This was very confusing for Courtney, but she didn't think anything of it at the time. She brushed it off and continued on with her day. A short time later, Courtney and her family began receiving texts and calls from a, from a restricted number. And this unknown individual would threaten to harm not only the family, but also the family pets. I'm sure at the time they probably thought it was like a sick prank from someone Courtney knew. But yeah. this ended up getting much, much worse so of course they thought it was a prank because 16 year old girl i mean in high school i don't know if i was still doing prank calls in high school but i definitely did prank calls and i never did prank text messages though so i don't know yeah me neither so they began getting calls from a restricted or okay so we're gonna call this individual that's um calling and texting them like restricted okay So they began getting calls from restricted on all of their phones, including their landlines, which is weird. Do you know what a landline is? That's like the old phone on the wall. Yeah. Okay. So they were even getting phone calls on their landline. The family was tired of the harassment, so they decided to change their phone numbers. Um, And while changing their phone numbers, they actually changed. I think, I don't know if all of them got new phones, but I know Courtney um, got a new phone. However, this did not stop Restricted from still contact- contacting them on their new phone numbers. The family ended up reaching out to the police for help. When they did so, the police came over. They turned all their phones off because that's got to be irritating. Like their phone's constantly going and ringing. Yeah. And, yeah. So they can't do anything. One of the family members said, A day I don't get a phone call from Restricted is a good day. The police ended up uh, tracking the calls to figure out where they were coming from. And as they tracked it, it turns out these calls were coming from Courtney's phone. And at this point, the police uh, weren't able to do anything, but this didn't look good for Courtney. So their main suspect at this point was Courtney. Wait, so was she getting phone calls too or no? Yeah, so it all started with her with the text messages. So somebody somehow was sending text messages to her friends. That wasn't her. And they were just saying weird random things. And how would you have how would you call yourself with your phone number? Unless they use like an app or something. This is 2007. So I was gonna say this later, but 2007, that's when the first iPhone came out. Mm, mm -hmm. So I obviously didn't have an iPhone then, so I don't know how advanced it was. I know you can go on like the internet from your iPhone but like I don't know about all the apps and all that so they were able to track it to Courtney's phone which is again odd but Courtney was like Courtney was not doing this she kept telling him I'm not doing this that's not me the family made their way home after going to the police 
and they had a voicemail on their landline. So they played it. And as they listened to it, they realized it was the exact conversation they had from earlier with the police. So, oh. yeah. So one of one of their phones, maybe Courtney's, was recording the conversation with the police and then it ended up going onto their voicemail. So, like, Jeez. how is that even possible? That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Courtney's parents believed um, it was Courtney doing this. And they believed that she was the one who recorded the conversation to mess with the family. They ended up taking her phone away in hopes things would finally stop. But of course, it didn't. And the harassment continued on. I do want to say, remember, I forgot to mention this. So when they went to the police station, I mentioned that they turned their phones off. Mm -hmm. But somehow, their phones turned back on. Specifically, Courtney's phone turned back on without her turning it on and record that the the voicemail of them talking yeah. to the police. So things escalated from here and Restricted was now able to see the family even when they were in the privacy of their own home. So the family decided to get an upgraded security system for their ho- for the home. But that night that they got the upgraded security system, Restricted called them and said that they already knew the passcode for it. Oh. Yeah. So, like, they're, like, instantly able to, like, get their information and just, like, start stalking their new phones, their new security system, like, right away. Yeah. I think that's another reason why they probably thought it was, like, an inside job. This obviously spooked the family. So, the stalker was even making comments on what clothing items that the family was wearing. It turns out this individual was stalking not only Courtney and her family, but also two other families as well. And they all lived in the same area. So it was the, honest. I don't know if I'm saying their last name right. So it's the Kai Kendalls, the McKays, and the Prices. So Mm -hmm. Courtney, Kai Kendall, and her family. And then Courtney's older sister and her older sister's husband lived in a different house. So that's two houses. And then right across the street from Courtney is her friend, and she was her family was also getting harassed. One of the victims, Andrea McKay, was in her kitchen cutting limes when her phone went off, and it was a text message from Restricted saying, I prefer lemons. So this person is watching her cut limes and proceeded to text her, basically to let her know that they're watching her. Now you would really think it's a joke because now they're just talking about food and clothes. Like, that's so scary. So the family then decided to put tape over the cameras and they even took the batteries out of their phone to stop the stalker from calling and texting them. But this didn't even work. One night, there was a loud bang on the side of their house and whoever made this bang took off running after it happened so they didn't get to see who it was. Um, So I'm... It didn't mention if this was associated with with the restricted person but that was a weird coincidence this kind of harassment went on for months like what else was this family supposed to do like they already got new phones they changed their numbers they tried getting security cameras and everything they did was not working like this restricted person kept getting through so like what are they supposed to do yeah i don't think there's anything else to do you could leave like the state but they'll still have but even then they'll still yeah so like the cops weren't even able to do anything. Because yeah, you can't get really into that. Yeah. Okay, so to this day, the phone stalker still remains a mystery. There have been no named suspects, no persons of interest since it all happened. But I will say that the FBI did try and step in towards like the end of it because the police couldn't do anything. Like the family was had nowhere else to turn Mm -hmm. so the fbi was actually stepping in to help and they believe that's what made the stalker stop what they were doing another thing this case was okay so they never officially came out saying if it was solved or not solved because the last it was ever reported on was that the stalker stopped because the FBI was coming in and they assumed that was Mm -hmm. why they stopped. So 
we don't know if there was a conclusion or not. Like, it all just abruptly stopped it. Stopped it. It abruptly stopped. Since this case was never fully resolved, if it was or it wasn't, we won't even know if it was just one person or if it was multiple. So, like... Yeah, that's weird. It's still been 17 years. Yeah. But also, I feel like it couldn't have been just one person. If it was three different families, it had to be multiple people. And with how quickly they were, like, hacking into this stuff and able to, like get their video footage or know what they were doing at that exact moment or, you know, things like that. Like, I don't think it was just one person. I don't know. Yeah. It had to be more than one bees. If it's only one, then they're going to have to be doing a lot of stuff. If yeah. they're doing the same thing to that one family, to all three or four of them, then there's going to be, have to be more than just one person. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go over some of the theories. So one theory was that it was actually Courtney doing this the whole time. And yeah, they believe. How? I don't know. So they believe that it was Courtney doing it to her family for fame and she was harassing her family um just just to be in the news basically or on TV. Mm-hmm. However, Courtney came out saying, "Why would I do that to the people I care about? Why would I harass my own family?" And then Courtney's mother also defends her and says she doesn't believe it was Courtney, but at one point she did believe it was Courtney. Because remember, they took her phone away. But that was because mm-hmm. the calls were being traced to her phone. But you can still say that you can do, you won't do it to the people you care about. But like, how are you supposed to call yourself? And Yeah, this was like, just too... What's the word I'm like? Multiple for? families for one person. Yeah, but also, like, wouldn't she have gotten caught? Because if she's look, watching multiple families and like... I just feel yeah. like living in the under the same roof as the same like the your family getting harassed you you'll get caught I just feel like Yeah and then then she would have to be either at that other person's family's house or be watching their cameras 24/7 to be doing that Exactly Then she would be suspicious because then she will always yeah. then she'll always be doing something else Yeah Um another theory was that this restricted number was a hacker and could have gotten the phone numbers from hacking. However, like I mentioned before, with it being 2007, it would have been really hard to do something like this. How limited technology had advanced at this point. Like, yes, we had the first iPhone, but it was nothing yeah. like it is today. So, yeah. like, back then, I mean, I've never hacked anything, so I don't know. Uh, I'm sure, though, at the time, it had to have been something very advanced for the time period yeah because it was brand new yeah but the reason that they believed that it could have been a hacker was because so in the beginning they were obviously getting stalked and then they got brand new phones well they think what could have happened was courtney got the brand new iphone and it was noted that she actually went and um went and looked at her MySpace page, which I don't even know. Do you know what MySpace yeah, is? Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, good. <laughs> so she looked at her MySpace page through her cell phone, and they believe that's how um, the stalker was able to get their information. But I don't know. That's It's just a theory. So it's actually even questioned if this whole thing even happened at all. Because the only real evidence that we have was the phone calls that they got from each other in front of the police. Which, did I even mention that? I don't know if I mentioned that. Okay, so I guess I forgot to mention that. When they went to the police station, all of their phones were off. Well, all their phones ended up turning back on, and they started calling each other. Like, their phones were calling each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you said they turned back on, but you didn't say they called each other. Yeah, well, they ended up calling each other, and then that's when Courtney's phone ended up recording the conversation they had with the police. Yeah. So that's the only evidence that we have is when the police are involved and when their phones started calling each other. The last update on this situation was when the FBI said that they were getting involved and then everything abruptly stopped. And that is the end of our phone stalker case. So what do you think about that case, Mason? It was crazy because I don't know how, first off, I don't know how 
um, Courtney would be calling the whole family and then all the other families at the same time if it was her. And then if it was a hacker, I don't know, because it's going to be too advanced for them to do that unless they're, like, really into that during that time, 2007. Yeah. But Do you believe it actually it's also happened? It's 17 years, so. Uh, yeah, I believe it, yeah. Yeah, it's very. It was very advanced for its time, though, for sure. Especially with the whole yeah security system on their house, cameras inside their house, being able to hack the cameras. But I mean, there. What other explanation would there be? It's just weird how they never came out with any sort of conclusion of what happened. Like literally, the last thing we heard was that the FBI was getting involved, and then that was the end. <laughs> so it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Weird. But that was this week's case. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you for coming back.